yoga teachers, stop neglecting your yoga practice. I've seen this time and time again, even in my own practice where we get the training, you're practicing all the time, you love it so much, then you become a yoga teacher, and as you start to teach more, your practice dwindles down. This video will talk about why yoga teachers stop practicing. So if that's you, you can figure out some techniques to use to reincorporate, reintroduce your enthusiasm and your passion for the practice that we all love so much. If you're a yoga teacher or future yoga teacher and you're not subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button and hit the notifications so that you see any time that we post more videos that have to do with yoga, yoga teaching, and how you can stay around to meet the yoga students that you have not met yet. We have this norm that many yoga teachers go through this process and they got me curious as to why. And then when we know the why, when we know the origin, we can take steps to overcome that. Neuroplasticity is a popular term that you can essentially retrain your brain just like you can train your muscles. So like lifting weights, you teach your muscle to be able to bear a certain type of load. You can do that in the brain by rewiring different patterns, different habits, different thought processes. What happens in neuroplasticity is that the optimal environment for neuroplasticity is a calm, feel-good environment. So when we're doing it towards the positive, we recreate these emotions, these sensation of positivity, these feel-good receptors to train our body to recognize that certain actions lead to certain positive outcomes. Well, think about that in the terms of your yoga practice. Your yoga practice consistently has taught your body that when you do these things, you end up feeling better on the other side. Well, you created that in an environment where you're taking deep breaths, where you're calm, where you're able to work through some of the things that you're working through. It could be a power flow, it could be a yoga nidra. Well, when you are in the role of teaching, you're creating that space. So it's emanating from within you. You're creating the perfect environment for neuroplasticity, the calm, the relaxed, the feel good environment. And your brain is detecting that correlation with your practice as if you are getting your practice in. You are creating that environment for you to have that positive outcome on the other side. You come out of class, people are thanking you for the practice, so it's further reinforcing this feel-good energy, and then there's a tendency to neglect needing to create it for yourself, or even to have an additional time where you are in that space where you're creating that positive and calm environment for yourself. So it's almost as if your brain has checked off that mark that you've done that for the day, when in reality you are creating that and really feeling the connection to that from within as you guide others in their physical practice. So pour into your own cup. I know for me, I was teaching like 20 hours a week at one point, and it just didn't seem practical to take out an hour of time each day and dedicate to my own practice. And I noticed that starting to manifest itself in other areas of my life. I was irritable, I was not nice, and my demeanor, my behavior, my comportment started to change, and it was noticeable by other people. So now we have this mean, angry, frustrated yoga teacher. Like that is not embodying the qualities of a yoga teacher. And we think about yoga, our different levels of bodies, our, our physical and our non-physical bodies. And if we neglect one of those, that can lead to blockage or dysfunction, dis-ease, in another. That is where we feel the importance 
of having our own physical and non-physical practice of yoga. That is why it's so important. That is what people pick up on before they ever even talk to you. They can feel something about you. So if you're consistently tapping into physical and non-physical, taking care of your physical and non-physical, that will continue to show up in your yoga teaching practice. The possibility here is that you could practice yoga every single day. Remember that yoga is so much more than physical asana. There are eight limbs of yoga. You could meditate. You could take deep breaths every day. And maybe even, maybe eventually, you practice yoga in every moment. And as a yoga teacher, you could take it upon yourself to be your own yoga teacher. Share the light from within yourself with yourself and then let it emanate out to other people. When you teach yoga to yourself and you embody the practice, that's so much more powerful than just telling people to practice yoga or just telling people how to move through the practice. And people can pick up on inauthenticity. So if you are not embodying if you are not taking the time to pour into your cup, they will very much feel how empty yours is when you attempt to pour into theirs. In 10 years from now, the people and the clients who you haven't even met yet, they need to hear your message. And that's what spreading world peace through inner peace is all about. So please do share this video with people who would benefit from it. And my name is Alicia. You can find me on Instagram at Afro Yoga. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Black yogis matter. We are changing the world one shirt at a time. Be a part of the movement, a part of the revolution, and get your shirt in the description below.